Greetings, everyone. Michael Shear, Executive Director of Fishing Future, and welcome back to our interactive online experience. Today, we're going to talk about the improved Clint's knot, that tried and true, really groovy knot that every fisherman and new fisherman can learn to tie. And today, we're going to kind of go through some of the steps. The improved clinch knot used to be called the clinch knot. And then as things got new and improved in various types of different lines, it became the improved clinch knot. Again, it could be tied with monofilament, fluorocarbon, and yes, it can still be tied with braided lines, even though people say that it's not a good thing. But one thing you have to remember is that when you're tying a fishing knot, depending on what type you, or what type of line you're buying, then consult the manufacturer and ask them, hey, I'm gonna be tying this type of line on this type of lure for this type of purpose. What do you recommend? One of the recommendations is when you're tying the improved clinch is tying it on lines smaller than 25 pound. The, fun, the, the poundage is the breaking point. You barely see this, but this is an improved clinch knot that is tied on a 30 pound monofilament line. And you really can't get that good clinch. Yes, the knot will hold, but it just doesn't look very good. It's very clumpy, as if clumpy is a word. I kind of like that word, clumpy. But again, going back to the knot you use, go back to the manufacturer. A lot of times when you buy fishing line, they will show you or have a little package inside that says this is the recommended type fishing knots that we recommend for our product. But if you're like me, I open it up. But when I get to the line, I take everything else and throw it away. So again, but with the internet and all these other great resources, you can go online and find out what type of knot is used for that type of fishing line, if that makes sense. So in our first video that we made, we taught new students and families how to tie or actually create a hook, a wire hanger hook that they can start practicing at home. Because when we're at home and none of the stores are open and you wanna learn how to fish, you have to find ways indoors to get ready for outdoors. So there's a little wire hook. You've created an eye and it has a shaft and it has a bend, has a point, but it has no barbs. You actually looked at a real hook. That's the bar, that's what keeps the bait on, that's what keeps everything in the fish's mouth from getting away. But the only problem is you don't want it in the eye and you don't want it in your nose and definitely not in your ear. So be careful when you're using hooks, especially these little ones like I like to use. Hmm, very cool. But back to this one. Now, now that you have this wonderful knot, now you need some kind of line, a practice line to use. And if you're going around the house, you're going, well, I really don't know what to use. Well, oh, I've got an idea. How about your shoe? On your shoe, you have a shoelace. You know, it's good for tying knots. Why can't you tie a fishy knot? But if you're like mine and they don't smell so good, you might want to find something else. Some paracords and some other things out there might be the best for you. So, before we get ready, we want to talk about the line before we start tying that knot. When we're working with knots, we have the working end or the tag end and the standing end. Oh my gosh, I might have a fish. Whoa, look at that. You have the standing end that goes up to your first eye and down to your reel. That's called the standing end. But when we tie our knot with the improved clinch, 
we're going to start with the working end. We're going to hold the hook either up or down, however you like to hold it, either in your right hand or your left hand. I like to hold mine in my right hand. I have the working end just a little bit. I'm going to run that through the eye. I'm still holding my hook. I'm holding the standing end down here, the working end up here. Now, I can just turn the hook a few turns. Now, when I'm practicing, the amount of turns that I'm going to use will depend on how big of line that I have. So if I'm using this heavy cord, I might only want to do it three times and then stop. If I'm using something else, a smaller type line, I'll use a few more turns. But again, when you're tying it with monofilament, fluorocarbon, or yes, even braid, you want to go at least six or seven turns. That way that when you start clinching this all together, it starts to bind up in front of the eye and it gives you that nice strong hook you're looking for. So again, back to where we were, we'll start again. The working end, the eye, going through the eye, turning a few times. Now, as you notice, right here in front of our eye and in front of our first turn is a little loop, okay? So now we're going to take our working end, we're gonna take it through that first loop like that. Can you see that? Let's see if I can't get it this way. There we go. Through that first loop, we're going to come back around and bring it through the top part of that loop, clinch it, bring it down. Now, we never want to take a knot, a fishing knot, and do it this way. Because have you noticed that the knot itself has actually just destroyed itself. So now it doesn't even look like a good clinch knot. So again, we can mess it back up again, clinch it downward and let it clinch on itself. So let's do that again. Take our knot apart. And that's one thing about using this type of practice ring. You can take the knot apart and put it back together again. Once you tie it with monofilament, fluorocarbon braid, it's almost impossible to take it apart. So back again, here we go. The eye, the working end, go through, two turns, take it through that loop. Now, if we were to stop right there and clinch it down, that's the clinch knot but we don't want the clinch knot, we want the improved clinch knot. So now we have this other little side right there, bring it back through, clinch it down, and you're ready to go. Okay, let's do that one more time. It's always good to do it at least three or four, five, six, hundred. Keep practicing, you'll get it. I working in through one, two, three, and depending on your line, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Bring it through there. And see, kind of notice you have a figure eight. You're down here. This is where you want to go through, back through, and clinch it down. Okay, we got that. So now, now that we have this, the other thing we can talk about is before you clinch it down, before you get all of this in here, before you get that clinch, a lot of people said to wet the line or moisten the line. Knots always benefit with a little bit of moisture. But in some areas, especially depending on the waterways you're fishing, you may not want that water in your mouth. So we can always use various things like they used in baseball. You know, they used to put a little 
oil up here, shrimp flavor, shad flavor, or even cheese flavor. And we could take a little bit up here and wipe it on our knot before we clinch it down. Or we can use something like, you know, the chapstick. Go a little bit about, you know, I live in Houston, Texas, where it gets hot and I want to protect my lips, you know. I might even put a bunch of it down here. So when I got to tie a knot, instead of putting it in my mouth, I might just stroke it right here or get a little bit underneath my hat if I have some there. And then as I put it in that knot, I'm infusing all that nice scent in my knot. So now when I clench it down, when the bait is going through the water, it's given off that nice bait trail even from my knot. Okay, just something to think about. You don't have to do it. Now, the other thing you have to think about is this little tag end. You know, do you just leave it there? We've caught fish with it there, on, off. It really depends on what you're fishing for. Or you can tie this knot in various ways. Some of the some of the people like a drop shot rig and they will tie a really long one on there and you know get that all up in there and put a weight on there and now you got a nice drop shot rig but in most cases you want to cut this off but again do we want to do this and really do we want to ruin that million dollar smile okay well i don't have a million dollar smile so uh, i have nothing to worry about but one of the things I do carry is either a pair of nail clippers or a really good pair of scissors. And again, depending on the type of fishing line, you have to plan ahead and prepare here. You know, it depends on your fishing line is how am I going to cut it? If I got braid and I only got a pair that can't cut braid, you can be in problem. But before we start going and cutting this, might be a good idea for us to actually test our knot. Okay, because there's many times when I hear somebody, you know, the, it, the fish breaks away and they go, wow, I had the big one. And it actually just snapped my line. But in reality, it was just a poor tied knot. And for instance, let's say if I have a, a knot and I'm putting my favorite knot on there, Okay, and then I go and test it. Ah, look what happened. But it didn't look like it break because it looks like the, the, the end of a, a pig's tail. Well, that means the knot slipped. So when you're tying on that knot and it's not really holding, maybe again, the knot that you're tying with the type of line you're using may not be what you need. This is 300 pound a braided type line on a very big hook so it's very slippery but even with that type of line look at it watch it Bink! and there goes the fish swimming away with my very expensive hook so again i want to be sure i'm tying that knot properly with the line that i'm using does that make sense okay so now that we have tested and we don't want this tag end, we've already tested. So now we want to cut it off. We always want to cut it at least one eighth of an inch, or not shorter, but maybe a little bit more. Cut it, but this tag end, now we don't want it to be free in the water. We want to try to recycle this. So a lot of times on fishing piers or places, you'll see these wonderful little tubes. And if you have a lot of fishing line, you can put that in those tubes and somebody will come out and clean these up. Now, you can throw these away. Well, I know, I, I said it, I said it out loud. Um, as long as they're six inches or smaller. So I can cut these up small little pieces cut these up in little pieces you know like this now i can throw it away because birds and little creatures can't get entangled with this little piece okay now you can throw that away that should be okay 
But if it's longer than six inches, recycle it. If it's six inches or shorter, maybe cut it up a little bit more, then it's safe to throw it away. Okay, are you with me? So back to that improved clinch knot. One more time, back to the eye, turn through the first loop, turn, go to the second loop, clinch it down, test, cut, add bait, go fish. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something today. Our next one is going to be about the Palomar knot. So I'll see you then. Have a great day.